Hi, I'm Shona. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager at Geoscience Australia. Geoscience Australia brings together experts in Australia's geology and geography. In this series, we're going to explore some of Australia's landscapes and landforms. We're going to learn about some of their features and the processes that shape them. We're also going to think about how landscapes and landforms are valued and the ways humans impact and protect them. In this video, we're going to look at mountain landscapes and the Australian Alps that form part of the Great Dividing Range. Mountains are pretty amazing, but what are they exactly? Mountain landscapes rise significantly above the surrounding land. In fact, many geologists classify a mountain as a landform that rises at least 300 metres above the surrounding area. 300 metres is around the same height as a 90-storey building. Mountains smaller than this are usually classed as... That's right, hills. A mountain range is a series of mountains that are close together. There are many mountain ranges in the world, and they've all been shaped by tectonic plates, but in different ways. You've probably heard of the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. It's part of a massive mountain range called the Himalayas, and it has an elevation of 8,849 metres. It's huge! The Himalayas are fold mountains. Fold mountains are the most common type of mountains, and they form when tectonic plates push into each other. When two continents collide, the equally thick plates cause the Earth to buckle, creating mountain ranges. Can you imagine that these layers of sand and flour are actually layers of rock? And we're going to see what happens when they get compressed. Can you see that the layers have actually become folded and bent? And we see that in real rocks like this. When a thinner and denser oceanic plate like this one pushes into a continent, it's heavier and it will slide underneath. And as it does that, it will cause the rocks of the continent to buckle to become a range of fold mountains. And it also causes magma to rise up and give volcanoes along the mountain range as well. And it's these processes that have formed the Andes mountain range that we have today. When tectonic plates push together and pull apart repeatedly, it forms cracks or faults in the earth. And then blocks of earth can be pushed up or pushed downwards to create block mountains and rift valleys. A place where you can see fault block mountains formed in this sort of way is the Sierra Nevada ranges in the United States. Volcanic mountains form usually near plate boundaries when magma rises up through the Earth's crust and flows out onto the surface where it cools and hardens. And this is how we get volcanic mountains forming. An example of this kind of volcanic mountain is Mount Fuji in Japan. So what does all of this mean? Basically, that the movement of tectonic plates is a major force that forms mountains on Earth. OK, so let's have a look at Australia, the lowest and flattest continent in the world. And a relatively low continent means a dry continent. Much of the rain that falls falls on mountains around the world, but we don't have many big mountain ranges, so our rivers end up struggling. So here we have the Great Dividing Range, Australia's most well-known range of hills and mountains that stretch for around 3,500 kilometres along the east side of Australia. That means it's one of the longest land-based mountain chains in the world. It's called the Great Dividing Range because rain that falls along here will flow in two directions, and the divide is where rivers flow to the east and out to the Pacific Ocean, or to the west to inland Australia. The range is made up of a series of low mountains, hills, plateaus, escarpments, and the biggest and most well-known, perhaps, are the Australian Alps. 
Within the Australian Alps, we have Mount Kosciuszko, the lowest, highest point on any continent in the world. Compared with mountain ranges in other parts of the world, the Australian Alps aren't very tall. This is because they are much older and have been affected by environmental processes for a longer period of time. They were also formed differently from many of the world's mountain ranges. There is still debate about the formation of the Great Dividing Range, which is also known as the Eastern Highlands. The world is a complicated place. This diagram demonstrates a popular theory. The first image shows Gondwana, a supercontinent, about 130 million years ago, and it's being stretched apart. And then the second image, about 100 million years ago, shows that there's faults created, and the stretching apart is dropping some of those blocks of land down to create a rift valley. And then as time goes by, that rift valley has got wider, and it's allowed water to come in. So you have a, a new ocean forming here, and on one side you've got Zealandia moving to the east, and on the other side you have what became the Australia that we know today. And on this continent that became the Australia we know today, this eastern side became uplifted. Further on, and we have time wearing down these rocks and smoothing out some of this great dividing range into what we know today, with an escarpment and a floodplain close to the coast and rivers flowing down to the ocean, and then the other rivers are flowing into the inland. What other processes do you think have acted on or shaped the mountains of the Great Dividing Range and the Australian Alps? Remember, weathering is when things like extreme temperatures, ice, salt, even plants and animals cause rocks to break down. And erosion is when wind or water or ice, again, glaciers, and even gravity carry those particles, those broken down rocks away. And in the end, deposition is where those loose materials that have been transported get deposited in a new location. If we look at the landscapes of the Australian Alps, we can see many different landforms. There are mountain peaks like Mount Kosciuszko, which is the highest peak on mainland Australia. There are mountain faces, which are the sides of mountains that are very steep. Slopes, which are less steep sides of mountains, Ridges, which are the long, narrow tops of mountains that are joined together to form a crest. And passes, which are valleys or paths between mountains. What else can you learn about Mount Kosciuszko? What other mountain landforms can you find out about? What significance does this area have for local Aboriginal people? And how is it managed today? Mm -hmm.